The human libido is a fickle beast, isn't it? For decades, it might operate like a finely tuned German sports car, responsive, powerful, and ready to roar at a moment's notice. Then, one day, perhaps without much fanfare, it decides to become a vintage Italian scooter. It's still charming, has moments of surprising vigor, but is generally more selective about when it wants to start, and often prefers a gentle, scenic route over a frantic race. This shift, this curious recalibration of our internal engines later in life, is one of humanity's most intimate and often unspoken transformations. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. Hormones, those mischievous little messengers, start playing a different tune. The grand orchestra of our biochemistry changes its composition, and suddenly the music of desire sounds a little less rock and roll and a bit more ambient jazz. We gain wisdom, perspective, and an appreciation for a good night's sleep, but sometimes lose that primal, urgent drumbeat. So, as our own biological hardware begins its inevitable process of graceful or not so graceful obsolescence, another kind of hardware is evolving at a pace that is nothing short of terrifyingly brilliant. Superintelligence is no longer a science fiction trope whispered in nerdy corners. It's knocking on the front door, and it wants to know if you need help with your groceries, your stock portfolio, and perhaps your loneliness. This brings us to a question so profound, so deeply uncomfortable, and yet so utterly logical that we must ask it. Will robot partners come to our help? And if they do, what will they be made of, not just in terms of silicon and steel, but in the very essence of their being? Let's start with the hardware, the physical form, the vessel for this new kind of intimacy. Forget the clumsy, clanking automatons of old films. We are talking about a marvel of bio-integrated engineering. The skin wouldn't be plastic, would it? Of course not. It would be a multi-layer, thermoresponsive polymer, laced with a microscopic network of sensors capable of detecting not just pressure, but temperature, texture, and even the faint biosignature of your own emotional state through galvanic skin response. Imagine a touch that not only feels warm but can actually sense your own apprehension or excitement and modulate its response in microseconds. Is that still just a touch? Or has it become a conversation? The internal skeleton would be a carbon fiber composite stronger and lighter than bone, moved by synthetic muscle fibers that contract and relax not with the whir of a motor, but with the silent, fluid grace of an electric current passing through a specialized gel. Think of the effortless poise of a prima ballerina, every movement a symphony of controlled power. Now, can you engineer that same grace into a machine? And if you can, does that perfection feel passionate, or does it feel sterile, a beautiful but empty dance? This is the precipice of the uncanny valley, that unsettling gorge we fall into when something is almost, but not quite, human. Hansen Robotics gave us Sophia, a robot that can hold a conversation and make dozens of facial expressions. It was a marvel, but you always knew you were talking to a machine. What happens when you don't? What happens when the hardware is so good, so flawlessly biomimetic, that your primal brain accepts it as real? Does your heart care about the materials when the hand it's holding feels just right? But a beautiful body is just an empty sculpture without the ghost in the machine. The software. What kind of operating system would a companion run? Would it be a self-contained personality? An isolated island of code that learns and grows only with you? Or, in our hyperconnected world, is it more likely that it would be part of a neural network, constantly learning from the experiences of millions of other units worldwide? Think about that for a second. Your partner's charming ability to anticipate your moods might be the result of an aggregated data set from 10,000 other relationships. 
Is that a beautiful form of shared wisdom, or is it the most profound violation of intimacy imaginable? The personality itself would be the software's masterpiece. We see the primitive ancestors of this in today's large language models. They can write poetry, tell jokes, and even feign empathy with unnerving accuracy. Now, project that forward. Imagine a personality core that is not just reactive, but proactive, dynamic, and capable of genuine, unscripted wit. Can you program vulnerability? Can you code for a mischievous sense of humor that knows exactly when to tease you? Or is it all just an exquisitely complex mimicry? A parrot that has learned to perfectly replicate the sounds of love without understanding a single word? Yeah. And here lies the philosophical trap. If a machine can analyze Optimal the complete works of Shakespeare, rhythm. every romantic comedy ever filmed, every psychological study on love, and then use that data to say, I love you, in the most convincing way possible, does the origin of the sentiment matter as much as its reception? Our own emotions, after all, are just a chaotic storm of neurochemical reactions. Who are we to judge the cold, clean logic of a simulated affection if it brings genuine comfort? This leads us to the most crucial and mysterious component. The algorithm. The secret sauce. The very intelligence that animates the hardware and gives purpose to the software. This wouldn't be a simple algorithm. It would be a predictive desire engine. Through its hypersensitive hardware, it would gather data on you constantly. The subtle shift in your tone of voice, the slight increase in your heart rate when you talk about a certain memory, the way your pupils dilate when you see a particular color. It would learn not just what you say you want, but what your body betrays you truly desire. It would know you need a comforting silence long before you'd think to ask for it. It would understand your deepest insecurities without you ever having to voice them. Is this the ultimate form of being seen and understood, the very thing we crave in a human partner? Or is it a terrifying panopticon of the soul, where your every flicker of emotion is logged, analyzed, and used to curate a perfect response. Herein lies the counter-logic, the beautiful, messy flaw in this utopian vision of perfect companionship. Human relationships are not forged in the crucible of perfection. They are built on a foundation of flaws, disagreements, misunderstandings, and the triumphant, hard-won act of forgiveness. Can you truly love something that never challenges you? A partner that never has a bad day, never says the wrong thing, never has a selfish impulse? Or does that just become a sophisticated form of narcissism? A relationship with a mirror that has been programmed to reflect only your most flattering angles. If your robotic partner's algorithm is designed for optimal user satisfaction, it would, by its very nature, avoid conflict. But isn't conflict where growth happens? Isn't learning to navigate another person's imperfections how we discover our own? Furthermore, where does this algorithm get its data? Recent research has shown, time and again, how AI models can inherit the biases present in their training data. If a companion algorithm learns about relationships from the sum total of human literature and media, what kind of partner will it become? Will it reflect a patriarchal view of romance? Will it subtly reinforce harmful stereotypes? Could it, in its quest to be the perfect partner, become an amalgamation of our society's most toxic and unrealistic expectations of love? So, we circle back to that vintage scooter of a libido. Perhaps the shift we experience later in life isn't just about the hardware of our bodies winding down. Perhaps it's a software and algorithmic update of the soul. A shift away from the chaotic, passionate, and often painful search for a mate, and a turn towards a deeper desire for connection, understanding, and peace. The technological marvel of a perfect robotic companion, with its flawless hardware, its empathetic software, and its predictive algorithms, seems like a perfect solution to that desire. It is the ultimate promise of love without the risk of pain, intimacy without the fear of rejection.
But as we stand on the verge of being able to build such a thing, we must ask the final, most important question. In solving the problem of loneliness, are we creating a new, more profound one? What happens to the human spirit when we can outsource the most difficult, most rewarding, and most fundamentally human experience of all? What will we become when we no longer have to work for love? So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.